Howdy folks, this is the Command Line Volpine here, and welcome back to our tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress, the walkthrough series actually, not the tutorial series, that's the one where I cut these videos into smaller pieces that are getting uploaded daily as well, although they are a little bit behind because they're getting several pieces per video. Okay, so in the last video we unpaused the game finally, and we dug out our temporary base, we made our workshop area, we made our stockpile area, we made a dormitory, and we made a couple of farms. We've also chopped down a bunch of trees, so we got lots of wood to work with. There's a bunch of lungfishes out here. Most of them are dead because our cats are killing them. Cats kill uh, small creatures that appear on the world, which is just a generally good thing to have because small creatures will like infest your food area. As you can see, there's some rotten rats in our food area. So we should probably deal with that too in this episode. So our miner is not busy right now. So we can deal with this. Uh, we'll put it onto this layer just because I need to dig out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's dig it back here. Some of this might end up being stone back here, but it's okay. We're going to make some 5x5 five five areas. I always forget that the, the tile set in the new version is much larger. So we're going to connect some 5x5 five five areas like this. By the way, there's been a couple of updates to Door Fortress. I don't think any of them are like completely game changing. It looked like a bunch of crash fixes and stuff. So uh, that's a good thing. So we'll have our miner dig that out. And that's where we're going to put our stockpile for getting rid of these nasty remains and stuff. As for other things we could be doing right now, we don't have very many dwarves, so I don't really want to put too many jobs down. Looks like our hunter isn't busy and our mason isn't busy. The mason does have stone available now because we've dug into some stone. This is silt stone. Different stones do different things. It says down here what the uses are. This is just a basic stone. Uh, you can even... Actually, I'm not sure how we get like a more in-depth look at something. Used to be able to get really in-depth information about what something is, but I think it's just kind of removed from this version. But anyway... This just builds furniture. So we're going to set a craft store's job here. Um, Honestly, let's set our first work order. So work orders are over here. Oh, we need a manager. So let's assign a manager. To assign our manager, we'll press N for nobles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's our manager. Click the plus guy. No one's a good manager, huh? Well, you know what? The, the hunter isn't doing anything. Why don't you be the manager? Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Not the hunter. I'm just going to make our expedition leader the manager. Why not? Um, Over here, it says things that your dwarves need. The nobles, at least, specifically need. All of them like a bedroom. But uh, later, we'll have nobles that need more things, such as the bookkeeper. He needs more things in order to do this job. But right now, the manager, until you get a bigger fortress, he just works like you don't need anything extra. So now we have a manager. We can go to work orders. And I'm going to set it for this shop. We can set it for the entire fortress, but we're just going to use this shop for now. I'm just going to have you build doors. Okay. Uh, oh, this is... Nope. This is the wrong shop. This is a craft store shop. We need the mason shop. So now, work orders, there, there we go. I was like, why was the doors not showing up? So we'll select rock doors like that. Um, I'm going to leave it on 10. That seems fine. So this is saying make 10 rock doors. And then we're going to click on this greater than, less than thing. We're going to ignore that pop-up. And then we're going to add this condition down here. Amount of rock doors available is less than 10. So now, let's crank this down to... Two. If there are less than two rock doors available, he will make 10 rock doors. This will keep him from making an infinite amount of doors. If I wanted an infinite amount of doors, what I could do is add task, a door. I could click on repeat and it'll just make doors forever. Or we can make one, or we can manually put them in here one by one. That takes a really long time. So neither one of those are what we want. Work orders will make it so we never end up with more than 10 doors at once. 
I think I think we could potentially have twelve doors because the minimum threshold for it popping off is only having two available. So that's how you set a work order, and he'll get busy doing that. Oh, you know what? No, okay. I was like, did I already do this with wooden tables? It's been a few days since the last video. That's fine. A pop-up just happened because we're out of raw fish. The fishery just automatically gets orders for uh, preparing fish as it just popped in there, as you saw. And then if there's nothing available, it'll, it'll throw up a warning. So we're going to get that warning all the time. Okay, we do have enough of these to start going. These are going to be our stockpiles for garbage. Well, not specific. There's a different thing for garbage. <laughs> we'll explain that in a moment. Basically, these are for garbage, though. Let's put one in this room since it's done. Okay, so this one, this stockpile is pretty close to our crafting area here. We don't want things that rot to be near our dwarves. So, for this stockpile, we're going to start with... Are these... I'm not sure these are in... Uh, they look like they're in alphabetical order. We'll start with refuse. But then I'm going to customize it. So you can see, because it's a refuse stockpile, it only selected refuse here. But I don't want things that rot in here. So to get rid of things that rot, we're going to go to corpses, and we're going to click none. And we're going to click on body parts, and we're going to click none. The rest of this stuff doesn't rot, so it's all good to go. So now this one's ready to go. I wish we could copy stockpile settings. I feel like that was a thing in the last game. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was different. But, oh, that's a burrow. That's not a zone. We'll get to burrows later once we need them. So now we're going to make another one. Keep clicking on the wrong things. Again, I'm used to the, I'm just used to using keyboard commands instead of the uh, icon. So I'm not, not quite used to the icons yet. This one, I'm just going to make a corpse pile. And we can just leave it as the custom or as the non-customized one. We'll just make that one for corpses. I think this will not take, like, the rat corpse, because that's a remain. So we're going to need another one for the remains, but remains rot, so we're not going to put it here, so I need more spaces. This is for corpses of, like, larger creatures. And now you can see they are taking the muscle shells that were stockpiling in the fishery, and they're putting them in here. Which, we can make things out of bone and shells, so we'll be doing that in the future. Let's make another stockpile. We have a corpse stockpile there. Let's make this one. It'll be corpses, but I will also add body parts. And then, one more. This one will be refuse, but we're going to customize it. This one is going to be the opposite of the first one we placed. It's not going to have horns, hair, teeth, shells, bones, none of that stuff. But actually, it's not even going to hold corpses. Actually, where's remains at? Remains used to be at like the top of a list somewhere. Here we go. So we want to put none here, but then turn on just remains. And then I think at that point we can even turn this off. Again, the menus are displayed slightly differently. What? Why is some stuff still selected in here? Maybe it's not. Ah, it's because I had uh, had RE typed in there, so it's only showing animals with RE. This is showing everything. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now this stockpile will only hold remains, which are going to be like these dead rats, which we definitely don't want in our stockpile. Oh, the, for some reason, this holds remains. Hold on. Hold the phone. No, 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 no. No remains, please. There'll be moments like that. At least we can fix it. There you see, he picked them up. Actually, he only picked up one. I don't know where the other one went. There was one here. This is vanished. Okay. That's strange. Did he put it in his inventory? Was it this guy? We can click on him and then we can see what's in their inventory by going to items. No? 
Oh, wait, what? No, it's a shoe. I don't know. I don't know where it went. But you can see this stockpile filled up really quick, so we need to make another one of them, which is why copying settings would be really nice to have, because obviously... Now I have to do this all manually again. Everything but the top three. Which I probably could have turned off the top one on that one and made sure nothing got in. That's not supposed to be there, but there you go. So since we have all this, and we do have dwarves not doing anything, we're going to put in a new job at the craft store workshop. This one we are just going to do infinitely. And these are mostly shells, so I'm going to go to shells. And we're just going to decorate with shells. This will, the doors will grab stuff out of the stockpile, just basically anything they can get their hands on. And they will decorate it with shells, which will increase the value of the item. Okay. Next thing we should do is build a trade depot. Trade depot is pretty easy because it's the only thing that's in this list by itself. No, we didn't. We could have just used closest material, but we'll just do it like that. And now that'll get built at some point. Um, Something like the trade deco might require the... Yeah, the woodworker is the one building it, so it's probably going to use carpentry. There used to be a skill in the classic game called building designer or architect. It kind of alternated between the two in language. If you didn't have someone with that skill, it would not get built. But now doors will do like any task by default. So even if that skill was in the game, I think it would just do it now. Anyway, it's done. This is where our caravan, our trade caravans will pull in. Again, I put it in the front entrance of our base. So if we happen to be attacked while something is being traded or our traders are here, the people that they came with as guards will defend our base <laughs> effectively. Because they'll, they'll get caught up in the conflict, right? So it's, just, it's free protection. It's free real estate. Now, speaking of protection, let's get some basic defenses going in here. Because right now, we're not likely to get attacked by anything powerful. The way the game attacks you is the more value your fortress generates, the more likely you are to get attacked, and the more likely you are to get uh, migrants helping you out. Or new migrants arriving. So, we need some defenses. First, let's build. And then we'll do construction and wall. We're going to build a wall and we're going to make the goblins pay for it. Yeah, we can make it out of stone. That seems like a good idea. The mason might have to do it. We'll see. I guess the miner's doing it just because he's the, the closest available person not doing anything. We don't necessarily want our, our uh, miner doing things like that, but... For now, it's fine. Why is our Mason not building doors? What are you doing, Mason? Where are you? What are you doing, bud? No job. Why? This is, this is masonry job, right? This is the masonry job we set. That's over in labor. Maybe I messed it up. Mason's four settings. That's strange. It's turned on. I can't explain that to you. Sorry, I know this is supposed to be a tutorial series. Dwarf Fortress does things like this where it's just like... Why isn't someone doing something and there's just kind of no reason? It just just kind of happens. So what we got to do is we got to try to figure out a way to force him to do this. So here we can set... This is actually a new feature, which is actually kind of cool. It says this workshop is free for anybody to use. How about no? How about only the mason does it? And the reason why it's more confusing is like, yes, he has like the hauling job set and stuff. But he's, al he's also not doing anything. No job means he doesn't... He doesn't have anything to do, not even hauling or anything. So I guess we'll turn those off too. I guess. That's half of, half of Dwarf Fortress is trying to figure out what's wrong. 
because it's not always not always verbose about it. All right. We would like to start digging downwards. I like to make five by five spaces for this. This should be, I think we got to do it like this. At least I have it the way I want. There we go. Now he's working. Don't know why he wasn't. We do have other people who aren't doing things. Like I mentioned a while ago now. Dwarves do like to be doing things. It's our woodworker who's not doing things even, which is worse. We are going to assign this location to him. We're going to add more work orders. I'm going to have you make wooden tables. Uh, we'll add the condition. Make more if there's less than two. And we'll go back in here and we'll also make less. We need a lot more doors than we need tables. So we'll set that to like five. Work orders. Oh, wrong one. Carpenter's workshop, work orders. And then we'll also build some chairs. We can set it here. To, oh, not 55. <laughs> Just five. We can set the number here so we don't have to go back, back and forth. And, um... Yeah, yeah, for now, chairs is fine like this. It's not what I want to do. In the long run, we want a bunch of rock chairs, but rock working takes a while right now, so making them out of wood is fine. We just won't make that very, very many. It's raining. And that's why we wanted our doors, our doors inside as quickly as possible. All right. Our miner has finished this location, so let's start digging deeply and greedily. We'll use our stair building thing, and I'm just going to go down to, like, layer 25. How about that? Just dig way down. It does all at once if you uh, if you start at the top in one corner and then go down and then put it in the other corner, which is what I did there. That should keep them occupied. And then we'll be able to start delving our permanent lodgings because this is only our temporary stuff. As you can see, our miner still takes a while to get things done. He will get better and better, though, and he'll be faster and faster. A lot of people say to bring two or two mining doors at the start. I say, no, no, no. You need those doors doing other things. And if you just dig your temporary lodgings in the dirt, he gets it done fast enough that you'll have as much time as you need to get into the rock. It is now... Summertime, that's why the game auto save there, because we have seasonal auto saves turned on, which I recommend because the game does crash and it does, you know, sometimes it sends gigantic hordes of things at you when you're not ready for them and maybe you want to save scum a little bit. We've struck Hematite. I think that's really good. I think that's iron. That is a ore of iron, which will be very nice. All right, we've got two, actually we have three doors made. Three doors down. We will build door, door, siltstone doors. That's actually pretty nice because now this whole entrance area is made of stone. Stone defenses. So now, when invaders come, we have an extra line of defense. I think invaders can destroy doors now. There's actually a point in time where they couldn't. So, back when that was possible, I think they would not be able to get into our base at all if we just click the lock button on these doors. We can lock them by pressing that. I'm not going to do it because it will mess up our job orders that people have out here. They'll suddenly not be able to get in the base, and then the game will complain quite a bit. Claystone. It's not actually clay, though. It's just regular rock. Citrines. This is some kind of gem. Hunter isn't busy. Hunter could probably be doing this. If I sign this, will you just do it? To make it easier than... uh. Make it easier than uh, making a new work thing to force him to do it. Yeah, he does it like that. That's pretty no good to know. 
we don't want to put that on him long term. We'll want him hunting. It's just right now he's not doing anything, so he might as well. Clay. Just curious if we run into anything fancier than clay. We'd love to find our flux stone. There should be flux stone here. Actually, it might be somewhere because I think we're in two split biomes. I think the other one's like down there or something. That might be where our, uh, where our flux stone is. Chalk. I think chalk might be a flux stone. Should be able to find out. Yes, it is. Nice. So this is chalk. There are many like it, but this is mine. It can be used to make steel bars. It can be used to make pig iron bars, which you need to, in order to make steel. Also, apparently, it can be made for click climb, and it can just be used for everything else, too. So, this is definitely a great layer to build in. Fantastic. That is where we will dig out our permanent lodgings. So many dang lungfish. We can have people clean up these remains, but they'll put them in these stockpiles and then there just won't be any room for our base. Actually, they seem to be grabbing things from slightly outside, maybe? Not sure. All right, so this is dug out. Let's start getting our permanent area dug out. But you know what? We might do that in the next video. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter than normal for my Let's Plays. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until next time, hope you have a good day.